Now really, let's do it up all the way from Jamaica. Come and really swing you out. Let's have a good big hand for Monty Alexander. Monty Alexander. <laughs> talked about Monty Alexander. That voice was the voice of my longtime friend Mr. Les McCann who introduced me on my very first album which they called Alexander the Great. It's very difficult to live up to that one but we keep trying right? That's almost 60 years ago. How can it be? I was just a mere kid in my life experience and um, I'm playing a song about the title of it is named for a man whose initials was JB. JB, okay, a lot of JB. I got a, they got a drink called JNB. Then there's Joe Beam. Then there's Jim Beam and hey, JB, right? Well, that was about a man named John Brown, who was an abolitionist during the Civil War. He was somebody who spoke up for people who were being slaughtered and taken advantage of. He was a true activist like some people are today and through the years. Martin Luther King was a great activist. Harry Belafonte is a great activist. John Legend is an activist. We have people who are activating their belief for a better world and wanting to help the little man who is being stomped upon and having a very difficult time. Now, I'm no orator or lecturer. I'm a musician and I want to say I want to give honor to a man whose initials are JB. And I saw him wearing these kinds of glasses. And I said, I'm aware wear in honor of Mr. JB, who evidenced a spirit of true kindness and empathy and generosity and decency. And the word is love, especially in his case. So many terrible things happened in his life circumstances that it made him even stronger to be the kind of man he wanted to be. Like all of us, he ain't perfect. Nobody perfect, right? But m what makes him special and why I want to say this 21st episode of Monty's Big Mouth is dedicated to this man and the new possibility, okay? When I saw that this man went out of his way to be kind to a little kid who stuttered, like he does and did very badly as a young man. JB went to this little kid and, and brought up such a sense of hope and confidence that little by little, I guarantee that little guy is gonna be able to talk straight up like Monty, big mouth, bip, you know, or Muhammad Ali, who talk a mile a minute, right? Well, Mr. JB, I think you know who I'm speaking of. I won't even say the name, but he wore, wore these glasses and I was gift, gifted with the spirit of imagination. When I play music, I imagine incredible things. Believe it or not, when I play a song, I'm not playing notes. I'm playing fantasy. I'm playing my dreams, the good dreams. God get me a nightmare every now and then, but I say, oh, Mr. Nightmare, go on about your business. And I think of the positive side of things. Well. I am um, I'm here to say to you more important than what we musicians are about. Let me talk about music. Music has really been my life, L I F E, four letter word, right? Because music literally put food on the table. I wasn't thinking about it, but I never went to music school. I say that over and over and over because I'm kind of in a different category to a lot of the musicians of today who 99% of them went to music school and sat there and heard a professor uh, who proclaimed he knew what this music was about or a doc 
doctor or somebody, you know, they have these titles at all these universities. This is what it is, especially this other four letter word called J-A-Z-Z or Z-Z where I come from. So you got life, you got jazz, and now we're dealing with something maybe a little important, if not a whole lot more important than these four letter words called jazz and food. Before you get to the food and the jazz, well, even though the food is, is top, top of the list, we've got to do something immediate now. It's called V-O-T-E. Yeah, man, you got to vote. You have to show up and vote. If you don't vote, you're out, you're out of sync and your chances are not as good as they could have been. All right, Monty's big mouth at work, but I'm wearing these glasses. I saw him wearing the glasses. I said, this is a cool dude besides being up and at him and taking care of business and being a today activist as well as being the number one office in the world, right? For the so-called most powerful country in the world. And he's coming and he's got a, a running partner with him that don't take no jive. And I'm so enthused that I have another four letter word. It's called H-O-P-E, hope. So hope and life in the middle of all of this, yeah, jazz and all that. But more important is this thing called get the life thing going by V-O-T-E-ing, voting. All right, Whew. I have to get all the breath right now. I imagine I'm at the beach in Jamaica. That's why I put on these glasses because the sun's shining. The weather is nice. That's in my mind. Maybe it's just raining right now in Jamaica. I don't know. But I'm thinking that's a sunny, beautiful day. We're at the beach. We're having, feeling that breeze coming from the trees. And um, life is good. But we got some challenges. Okay. Now, that recording was back in 1964, 65. Maybe it's not quite 60 years, but it's almost, right? And this photo of yours truly, me, Monty, was about five years after that. So I'm, I'm getting to be a Mr. Cool dude, right? So here's the cool Monty. He's in Central Park. My friend Johnny Pate took that picture because we made an album called This Is Monty Alexander and an album called Taste of Freedom. These were on the MGM Verb label. And that's me in Central Park. And Johnny said, get up on that rock, Monty. I'm going to take a shot. He, was, he took the camera and he took the picture of Monty on the rock. Okay. So this is Monty Alexander a few years later telling you stories, playing a song, and sharing this time with you, this reminiscing in rhythm, as I call it, with my dearest number one, my love, my co-pilot, my take care of business with all this technology that I can't even figure out one thing from another. You know, all these Twitters and all them, them, all them things. I don't know much about it because I come from the analog age. That's when you recorded the music. It was a big tip, tip. And if they made a mistake, they took a razor blade and cut the tape and spliced the tape. And then that, that ended up being what you heard, right? These days, they got, zip, they press a button and a zap and a zap. And next thing, there's a digital version of what you said and did. Yes. So, piano. And this is how the food went on the table. I would send the money to my mother, make sure she was all right. And I just kept going. Now, as you all know, that stopped because musicians, 99.9% .9 have no more jobs because they all got canceled because the presenters, quite understandably, are afraid to present a program and have 300 people sitting next to each other like this saying, hey man, this is groovy, right? And this is a groovy thing and they're sitting there and say, hey man, but where's your mask? So we have to be mindful of distancing from each other and that means how are you going to sit in a concert for 300 people? Maybe they can only have 30 people, 50 people and that doesn't make for the revenue to be good. So guys like me are actually playing songs and talking and asking their fans, their friends, to send something, what them call tip jar. No, it's not a matter of a guy saying, hey, let me, give you a, let me give you a tip, buddy. No, this is the tip in the jar that when I remember playing at the piano bar and it was at Jilly's and Sinatra would walk by, sometime he'd put a $50 bill, a $100 bill, because the man had money, you know? So we are here to, to not ask for anything, but keep it in mind that Monty and all his peers Pretty much most all of them, we're not getting any kind of payment for this. But at some point, if I keep this up, 
I may have to go to that humble place and say, you know, folks, if you enjoy what I do, what I say, then, you know, come on up with some kind of encouragement to make me keep going because everything is, um, the blessing of life is free. The best things in life are free, but something not free. The free and when you go to the store to buy, buy the bread and the, the meat and all these things, you have, you, have, you have to pay for it. And the only way to get it, there's two ways. You, you put a weapon and you say, give me the money. But we don't do that. We say, here is my hard-earned dollars, uh, whatever the kind of money, euros, uh, uh, yen, whatever. And that's how you buy the food, right? Now, I want to say this is an important time and thank you for listening thus far because absolutely we talked about JB from Civil War days, John Brown. He had, he was, his life was taken, assassinated, but he was there helping people of African heritage that were brought to this country, to the Western Hemisphere against their will. And that said, um, the modern JB for me is the man who is up for you asking you to vote for him. That's all I have to say. I didn't even call his name because you know who I'm talking about. He likes these kind of glasses. I want to take off my glasses and I still, I'm still in Jamaica in my mind. Oh, wow, sun bright, man, Lord. <laughs> so I put my aviator glasses here and I put Monty Alexander picture over here and now I shall play a little piano music, if you don't mind. Can I play the piano music? By the way, we have a report from Jamaican weather. Somebody said it's raining. That's all right, because behind the rain is something called sun. By the way, so, so hold on to the rain and wait for the sun. It's coming yeah. very shortly. Anyhow, I do, you know, I write down a song here and a song there, and I'm going to just, I just start playing, playing notes on the piano because, like I said, I don't even know what I'm doing, but somehow. <laughs> Frank Sinatra said, nope, we're going to call it Fly Me to the Moon. 
because Mr. Sinatra realized that was just the same time when those men went to the moon. And that gave the song more impact for the public to say, Frank Sinatra and the astronauts, they went to the moon and Sinatra sang the song, Fly Me to the Moon. And it's not, um, uh, in other words, hold me tight, whatever. So that was a little thinking of Mr. Sinatra who had a lot to do with me in the beginning of my coming to America. He saw me playing and he told his friend Jilly Rizzo, give that kid a job. Simply, the kid, I was 19, 18, 19, and I went and I played in New York where I am right now, where things are a little different, the vibe, you know, but it's going to be all right. Now, I want to play a song that is associated with none other than Mr. Charlie Chaplin, one of our great American entertainers. He was from England and he was the little, what was his name? The little man with, with the walking stick and the bowler hat. And he brought this man that he invented. The guy was Charlie Chaplin. He wrote the song called Smile, Though Your Heart May Be Aching. Is aching, but we smile, right? That's, that's the beginning of the whole cycle. So I'm going to give you my version of one of them of Smile. <laughs> Chaplin wrote that song. I think all the people that are comedians that that spread such joy, they also happen to be in the quiet hours. They're not always happy, but they work at being happy. In fact, uh, I used to hear stories like Chaplin and some of these other folks that make us laugh a lot. Maybe Richard Pryor, maybe Red Fox, maybe so many others. You know, they know what 
sadnesses and depression is. That's why that can be humorous. And Chaplin was no different. In fact, I used to hear about Winston Churchill, the great, great politician of, of Britain, Great Britain during the Second World War. He was a great motivator. And boy, he had his faults too, let me tell you. But Winston Churchill suffered from a lot of depression, but yet he motivated a whole nation to not step backwards from what was going on at the Second World War. So ultimately, they won the Battle of Britain, and ultimately America joined the war, and the end result was a glorious one, and we, the Allies won the Second World War. Of course, I was not there, but I was born the very day the Allies norm landed on Normandy, Montgomery Alexander. They named me after Field Marshal Bernard Montgomery, the great British general. I mean, that was my parents once said, we've got to name this little guy something important, so he's going to have to try to be all that. So they named me Montgomery Bernard after the Field Marshal, hence the name Monty, because I was born June the 6th, 1944, D-Day. Yes. And here I am still running my mouth, folks. I love it. I love playing music. Now, I'm going to get a little personal about my own self. A little, little challenging to do so. And sometimes my dear wife says, don't do that. Don't say it. But I said it before. There's a word. This one is a five-letter word. S-T-R-O-K-E. No, six words. Six letters. Man, I can't even count anymore. Well, anyhow, it's called S-T-R-O-K-E. Six letters to say, stroke Yes, this so-called bad, bad piano player had a stroke. And when I came out of that situation, when I had that experience during my physical challenge, after I was taking something called chemotherapy, when you have the cancer, because a lot of us get the cancer, and thank God we survive it, and some people don't, and we always... Just have to shed a tear for that. And all the millions of people that left because of the big C, we call it. Well, I was spared. And I remember there was a piano in the um, rehab center there. And I saw, yes, I wonder if I can play the piano. My left side was weird. I was like, what, what? And I went to go play the C on the piano just to see, okay, this is my left side. The piano do the thing on the right, like, like before. And I would go to hit the C and I go hit the C. <laughs> Man, I hit the A flat. That's one, two, three, four, five notes below the C. And I say, wait a minute, I ain't hitting my C. And the next day I came back down and I went to try to hit the, the C and I hit the A. Yeah. And then next, and kept going and I hit the, this B flat note. And then the B note, and this happened over a period of a couple of weeks, three weeks. And then one day I said, C. It is my C, right? And but I was still dealing with this floppy muscle because it messed with the left side muscle. And you know, some of our everybody, all the people that get strokes and they're like totally disabled. I mean, really, really messed up in that can can't move and in the wheelchair and, and God forbid they, they end up losing life itself, right? Well, I'm one of those what you call blessed guys that I had me a minor but affecting stroke. And when it came to the piano playing, I said, wait a minute, it don't affect my joy because the notes I play are trying to be joy notes. So, okay, I may not play all them notes like I used to, because I used to play the boogie woogie mean. Yeah, you know? I remember I used to do it. driving <laughs> because you know it's like but before it was like yeah I played that for like 10 minutes you know and it's about the left hand which is something that most of the jazz people forgot about or they don't think they think it's old time or it's corny I see, I see a kind of what you call a revisitation of something called stride piano and stride piano is when you go you play the bass note and they said no that's the problem because when you have the thing that I just described you tend to want to hit that note and you end up going you miss the note so because I missed the note I'm called I call it being careful being cautious because who wants to hear the wrong note and occasionally 
people who really listen to that Monty guy, you just hit him a clinker. But the overall picture is I go for it, folks. I'm still playing the piano, and I, I'm grateful to the creator that I can still play the piano and go perform, and I, there's an audience there, and I, I still have the joy of sharing that. So, okay, I'll have a go at something that requires a little more dexterity, and even though I might hit me a few clinkers, I hope it doesn't turn you off, but I'm going to play something called Sweet Georgia Brown. Let me have a go at my Sweet Georgia Brown. I can play it real slow, like I don't know nothing, Monty after stroke. We keep rolling. We don't stop. Now ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play something a little simpler. This is a little love song I wrote. Just three notes. And it is a, let's call it a little rhythm from Jamaica. I call it love notes. And some people wrote to me and said, I love that song that me and my dear girl got married to that at the wedding. We played that in the background and it was a song that says, I love you, simply. And it goes like this.
of notes. I mean, I love you. Hello there, Hi. Miss Cat. Just saying, a couple of people asked for PayPal information on YouTube, so I gave it to them. Oh. So cool. I don't know. The Facebook people ain't got it. I'm not the Facebook people want it. Well, whatever it is, whatever it is, say okay with me. <laughs> One day we go to the to the store across the street and get the bread, and if we don't have no box, the guy would say, "You look like a nice guy. I'll give you some bread and some meat and some whatever." And but hey, let me let me tell you what I want to do right now. On a more serious note, I want to take this opportunity and turn the musical expression to something that you might call advocacy, because you all know about a man named Bob Marley, a really true. We call him a messenger. Of important matters and he was a spokesperson for the disenfranchised and he wrote songs such as redemption song and I'm just gonna read you a little lyric and he wrote it I imprinted it out and so it says um old pirates yes they rob I they rob me sold I sold me to the merchant ships minutes before they took I from the bottomless pit but my hand was made strong by the hand of the Almighty. We forward in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help to sing these songs of freedom? Because all I ever have was, were redemption songs. So this song of redemption song, I'm going to play, play it in a little bit now and it, was, it started like this.
woman no cry. And here's a song that I put in that category. It was written by a pianist, good friend of mine, Dr. Billy Taylor. And the lyric was, was by Dick Dallas was his name. And it's called, I wish I knew how it felt to be free, how it feels to be free. And it goes like this. Emancipation, and we're dealing with that period right now, ladies and gentlemen. And it's a pleasure to sit here and reminisce and play a song or two. We would have, we have clinkers in the left hand, especially. And um, the next thing to do is introduce a wonderful vocalist who happens to be Miss Cat, known as Puss, who can sing so beautifully. And um, I invite her now to sing a song. That, how about um, my song I wrote called Got To Go? Yeah, this is my song. And, and Got To Go is a title, but it doesn't mean we got to go yet. <laughs> and and, and, the and sub -title, it's not the other got to go either. No, but it's not, it, it's not, the other title is Don't Go. So we're not going to go yet, but you're going to sing like Got To Go, right? Yes. Okay. And we find the, the right spot. All right. See, I don't know if people can see me here. Thank you. 
lyrics by Brian Jobson. Oh, my friend Brian Jobson Brian, wrote those words. Fill up, Brian. Fill up, Brian. Brian. Hope he's watching. I hope he's okay where he is. And um, my dear friend Brian and his brother Wayne. And uh, all these songs that Cat sings. And um, how about that glory of love, right? Ooh, then we just, I don't even, okay. Let's try that one. Okay. I have to have the words for that one. Sure. This is a premiere. We're going. We never played it, sang it, anything. All right. So the glory of love and um, the, that key we said would be the good key is B flat. Yeah. Did we say it was written in 1936? Something like that. Before I born. And I saw this in the film with uh, Sidney Poitier. Guess who's and, coming to and, dinner? Yeah. Yes, that great movie when Sidney. Oh man. Sydney you know, Poitier. messed yeah. them up with that prejudice thinking, and he brought love. A la Sydney, man from the Bahamas, and and of there, course Catherine Hepburn is in it, and Spencer Tracy. Oh my goodness, what a great movie! Yeah. And um, Glory of Love. That's where I heard. This I hope I remember. But Bill Hill. Bill Hill, okay. Bill Hill wrote this. Yeah. So that's B flat, right? You've got to give a little, take a little. Your poor heart break a little. That's the story of, that's the glory of love. song from France in English translates to those things that fall at autumn time from the trees it's called right. autumn leaves right remember Jimmy Heath had this song called sleeves yeah Jimmy Heath <laughs> wrote a tune based on those harmonies of <laughs> autumn leaves and sleeves. Jimmy with that sense of humor just breast his soul he left us just a few weeks ago and departed to the greater place and Jimmy one of the funniest guys in the world, besides being a great musician, a composer, and saxophone player, good friend to many of us, he called his composition Sleeves. Because <laughs> <laughs> Autumn Leaves. Yeah, leaves. Sleeves, yeah, yeah. Autumn Leaves. <laughs> so Funny. here is a version by Miss Caterina Zapponi, born in Rome, Italy, but her mother was French. French. And she used to sing this song, and of course, Yves Montand has the most famous version and are you saying it again Monton. Yves Montand Yves Montand who was Italian by the way oh yeah Yves Olivi okay yeah but I mean French but all right yeah. so Yves Montand Yves Montand Tom. Yves Monta because the mother used to say come on Monta come come up so okay. Yves Montand 
Okay. That was just, I well, I'll have a go. I'm going to play that chord, and you know what to do with that verse, and you're going to acapella or acapulco or whatever yeah. you call it. <laughs> okay. Like like Can we be serious about it? Well, you make me laugh, acapulco. Oh. All right, stop. Okay. Okay. Leaves. <laughs> amis, en ce temps-là la vie était plus belle et le soleil plus brûlant qu'aujourd'hui. Is that D minor? D minor. Is A minor is my key? We shall change key. Big mistake. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Let me give you some A minor leaves now. You ready? Yes. All yes. Right. Leaves from A minor. Amis, en ce temps-là, la vie était plus belle et le soleil plus brûlant qu'aujourd'hui. Des feuilles mortes se ramassent à la pelle. Tu vois, je n'ai pas oublié. Les feuilles mortes se ramassent à la pelle, les souvenirs et les regrets aussi. Et le vent du nord les emporte. So we're in a major chord and that's such a lovely song and the way you mm -hmm. sang it because mm -hmm. it's like when you say you didn't sing it, you own that one. Mm -hmm. And it talks about the leaves falling and it has to do with love, right? Tell yes. me the French. What oh, it it's means. A okay, this is a poem by uh, Jacques Prévert. Oh, and Jacques. it was set to music by Jacques Cosma. Oh, Jacques. Melody. Yeah, to Jacques. <laughs> it's a French name, Jacques. Okay. <laughs> that's G-S-C-Q-U-E-S. Yes. Right. Jacques. 
right? Jack, huh? So um, it's a song that r reminds me that it looks like us. You used to love me, I used to love you. But life separates those who love each other ever so softly without making any sound. And the, and, and, and the sea erases on the sand the footsteps of those who used to be together. Another cheerful song. <laughs> yeah, well, as you know, we're in the business of the, the cheerful Cheer. songs. Ah. And, um, you know, this is a little comment I want to make, you know. I'm this sort of musician after 60 years of playing the piano all over the world. And, and um, I'm not really a jazz musician. I'm just a musician, you know. And in fact, I never knew what jazz was, I just saw these people making up stuff, you know, and it seems like the jazz thing, besides the musicians playing the music, there was a community around it, where people said, we're jazz people, and it almost seemed to me, in my not, not very smart mind, that they were separating themselves from music people, just people who didn't know jazz and bebop and all that, because there was this other music that was just beautiful, you'd hear a country western song, you want to cry when you heard those lyrics, or you heard a a classical piece, Rachmaninoff piece, and you heard it, and to me it was always a wonderful uh, bucket of joy, potential joy, and I've, all these years, before stroke, during, after, I wanted to play all these kinds of songs, and um, I kind of wonder today with the whole world having become so educational, and thank goodness for education, but when it comes to music, the only music I knew was the music I picked up from my elders and just been on the street corner. So I sort of feel a little alienated because most all the people around me now are these awesomely educated people that learn how to read that music and can explain the arpeggio and the, the dissonant and the, the uh, um, expressions, what do you call them, chords? <laughs> Give me them kind of chords, that's not simple ones, what them chords? When you said diminished the chords? D flat major no, D flat seven sharp nine. Yeah, a deflated chord <laughs> deflated and, a, and, a, and a digressed <laughs> chord, all them chords that sound like, what do you mean chord? What is that? The only chord I know is a chord like rope. You pull the rope. So <laughs> augmented, you like augmented chords? Augmentated notes, yes. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, I always think, and it's a little bit of what you call complex and paranoia that the jazz people, forgive me for saying it, they don't know me, they don't like me. Because I'm, I, I can't tell whether if I'm a white guy, I'm a black guy, I'm a brown guy. But I say, hey, I'm a beige guy. Like when Duke wrote the black, brown, and beige. Because the world is so into putting you in a box. And I don't even know what box I fit in. I'm a human and a people box. And when I play music, I'm playing for people. I'm not playing for jazz people. I'm just playing for people. So this sounds a little uh, up, up, outrageous. But I, I just want to share it, get it off my chest. I don't belong in this world where everybody's school fed and they're professors and doctors and they analyze this thing and they can explain it. In fact, I often think some of these people who really don't know, they kind of hijacked it because they wrote about all these things and said this is what it is and this is what it isn't and this is what it is and to me to this day I can't figure out what it is. And I tell people, how are you going to explain a bird taking off, flying in the air? That's, that's magic, that's a mystery. It's something that can, only the creator can explain. So here we are, these people that's more scientific, and we need them. Lord, do we need scientific people right now figuring out about how to get rid of virus. And but not vaccine. in music. But not with music, <laughs> because this, of course, you know, I'm sure Mr. Beethoven and Mr. Brahms and Mr. Mozart, them gentlemen went and did, did some hell of a studying, but I still feel it came from their own loins, as we say. So anyhow, I'm this, uh, this guy fell off a tree, and I feel like I'm not a part of this world here. So you people who are listening to me talk and play, um, I really appreciate you because we're, we're into this jazz thing, but to me it's just music. If you can play a song and have whistle the melody, that's, that's most of what it's all about. You know, you know, like she just sang that Autumn Leaves song, made me, made me go to another place. I almost got that goose bump. I don't know, you know chicken skin, what do they call it, right? Anyhow, folks, I think I'm slipping into madness here talking all kind of <laughs> yes. stuff here and we want to offer something to if you don't mind me sharing yes. this what? fun thing that you do because you do all these impressions of some of your favorite oh, performers yeah, yeah. you know yes. and i even had words that could take me there you might have to help me through the words oh, 
And uh, it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. It's, it's the song that Mr. Nat King Cole did, it's called Unforgettable. And um, it's there somewhere, and it may not be there. No, 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 if it's not there, I, I ruined everything. Maybe that's at the bottom. There it is, there it is. You see, one of my great talents is to forget. I forget words when in the middle of the song. Yes. Too small. Can I read it? Yeah, man. I do. We small sometimes. Yeah. Here we are. So as we expose to these precious people our private goof up stuff. This um, array. Here it is. Okay. It's been a joy and a pleasure and an honor to share this 21st episode of Monty Alexander and Katerina. The last. Spending a little time with you. And thanks for listening and thanks for staying with us. And that Is was, it your last? Is well, it really your last? I think it might be because I got to go to the beach and rest my mouth. I've been <laughs> yeah. talking At so much. At least for a while. Yes, and then maybe figure out how to we'll do this, this PayPal thing because all the guys are out there saying, hey, give, me a, give me some bread. Some, me, I want to just get some mangoes and some coconuts. <laughs> Some guavas, some tamarinds, some guineps, some star apple, some jackfruit, some sour sap, some sweet sap. And I'm thinking right now of all the precious people from the Jamaican island in the sun that I come from. And there's a special lady out there. He's, she's a senator. And her mother is from India and her father is from Jamaica. Her name is Senator Harris. God bless Senator Harris and may she do the thing. And may the JB, on top of things, the man who wears these glasses at times and when the sun is shining and says good things because he has empathy and he goes to a little kid who's stuttering like he did and be kind to him and he doesn't make fun or, or mock him because he's got a disability, you know? So I'm just great that, that we have people like that on the horizon right now and we have to do that four-letter word. Nope, it ain't the bad, bad one. Start with F. And it, it's not J for jazz. It's V for V-O-T-E. November 3rd and before. Vote, people. I'm planning on voting when the t voting get good. And like, like a certain lady just said, soon as you can. Because you never know what this thing is, right? So with that last statement, I say one love like Bob Marley wished everybody and say... <laughs>
Gambap to the beach. <laughs>